One. Yeah, we are recording. Thank you, Jim. Well, welcome everybody to our Automating Your End-to-End -end Requisition Process webinar. We are so appreciative of your time and excited to show you how companies are using Paramount Workplace full requisition and procurement system to control all their spending. And of course, thank you to you, Jim, and DNA for being such a great partner and allowing us time with you and your customers. Like Jim said, my name is Susan Thiesing, and I'm the Channel Partner Director for Paramount Workplace specific to our SAGE customers. And then with me today is my colleague, Beth Wabama, who is also a Channel Partner Director. We both come from a long experience background in working with accounting systems and specific to spend management. I actually used to work for SAGE and am thrilled to now be working for one of their premier certified gold development partners. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that Paramount Solution is one of the best in the marketplace when it comes to spend management. Paramount Workplace focuses on two core functions. So requisition, which we are focusing on today, and then expense for employee reimbursement. That's all we do. Uh, we are experts in the spend management field. The key to our success is not only making it easy to enter a requisition or submit an expense report, but accounting departments end up loving us because when they get the transactions sent to AP in Stage 300 uh, from our workplace modules, they feel comfortable about paying that invoice without any further review because it's already been through a thorough and robust approval process. We are 100% web-based, so you can access from your computer, tablet, or mobile. And once installed, Workplace is connected in real time automatically to Stage 300. So when you're in the Workplace application itself, if you're looking at a GL account or a GL budget or a vendor, it's being pulled directly from Stage 300. And whether you choose an in-house or a cloud-based installation, Workplace acts exactly the same. For today's agenda, it consists of highlighting all these powerful features. Uh, Beth is going to show you requisition entry and include all of our catalog options, which include punch out. Then we'll go through approvals of the requisition, which then allows the creation of a purchase order. Then from there, if you are interested in the full procurement, once the goods or services are received, we will go through receiving and invoice match, which can be done two-way or three-way. Then finally, we'll go over check requests for all the non-PO related invoices. And then if time permitting, we can certainly discuss our expense module. Um, and of course, we will wrap up, take questions at the end, and then just remind you of the $10 Starbucks gift card because we are so thankful for your time. Before we dive into the requisition demonstration, here's just a quick slide on our expense module. We have a very slick on-the-go mobile capture of receipts, so you no longer need to keep those, or actually some of you who lose them, like myself. Um, and then um, also know that we have direct connect banking integration for automatic import of your credit card transactions that then reconcile to those credit card transactions on the actual expense and receipt. Um, and you know there are many other features listed here. So we can either talk about that at the end time permitting, or certainly you're always welcome to contact Jim and set up something separate with us to go through the expense module. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to Beth so she can go through the demonstration. Well, thank you, Susan. Um, as Susan mentioned, my name is Beth. And what we're going to do today is go through a presentation of doing the requisition. Um, and then as we move forward, again, like what Susan said, do the receiving invoice matching for our referral procurement and then also touch on our check request. What I'm going to do today is log in at a couple different users to show you requisition entry, the approval of a requisition, and then ultimately review that requisition to create a purchase order. I'm going to walk through a different examples and I log in as different people. Um, and I believe we'll have a Q&A at the end of the actual demonstration today, so please feel free to 
either type in your message in our chat box or you can also just save that um, question till the end of the presentation. Again, Workplace is a 100% web-based application. You access it via your browser. I prefer to use Chrome, and that's what I'm using today, but we also support Safari, Firefox, as well as Internet Explorer. So I'm going to start as an employee and log into the application to start the requisition for pre-approval for a purchase order. The person that I'm going to log in today, his name is Foy. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in Foy and we'll log in to his actual dashboard. Now as I log in as FOI, there, um, every user can have their very own dashboard. This is a dashboard that's been configured for FOI as the user. You'll hear me say the word configured quite a lot as I go through this demonstration because our product is very mature. Um, and in that time frame, we've been able to add quite a few different configurations of the product versus saying we need to customize that product to meet your needs. As I log into the dashboard, there are things on this dashboard that we want to discuss. And first off is the outstanding transactions that are highlighted on the left-hand side, excuse me, right-hand side. The outstanding transactions will show up if at least one line is open on that transaction. It'll show you the status of the transaction, if it's waiting for approval, who it's waiting for approval from. And if you need any more information, you could simply click on that transaction, taking you into it to find out more details. Again, it's a high-level view of um, open transactions right, right away for you on your dashboard. In the middle of the screen, we have an area that's called Shop. And if you've been given access to Shop, the internal catalogs or our punch-out catalogs, this is the real estate area that it would take up on your dashboard. On the left-hand side, we show the navigation to the different module or modules that you have been given access to. Today, we're going to go into our requisition and check request. As I go into requisition, requisition check request, I can see still the outstanding transactions. I can see the maintenance, the transactions, as well as the report or reports that I've been given access to. As we talked about these being open transactions, we also have the ability to find historical information. I go under find requisition. This will bring up all the information that I have been given access to in my historical file. If I see a transaction that I'd like to click on, I can easily highlight that click on it and get the information from that actual detail of the transaction. Or I could search from our very large find by criteria. Maybe I want to find a requisition um, in regards to a, by a specific vendor or vendor name or GL account. And then I can filter by the different search type criteria and add a value if need to and then search. Once that information is fully populated, I could export out to Excel or I could slice and dice that information um, as needed. We also have our requisition entry, and that's where we're going to go next. So as I click on requisition entry, this brings me to the requisition entry form that has been uh, configured for this user by the name of FOI. Now, as you look at the screen, there may be fields on here that are just not applicable to your business, and they can simply be hidden from the actual screen. We have a user-defined template that's very easy for you to hide fields, Make fields default values, such as my location and department have defaulted in values. We can also make uh, values as read-only. If that field was read-only, it would be set to gray and you would not be able to change it. We also have the ability to have required fields. System required fields are denoted with an asterisk, such as item description and quantity. Underneath the general tab, you could have any of these fields set to required as well and they would be noted, denoted with a red asterisk. Next to the fields, there are magnifying glass. This magnifying glass means that there is more information behind that actual field. If I click on the magnifying glass next to the vendor field, this brings up all the vendors that I have been given access to coming from your vendor file. This information can be filtered and restricted. So for Susan, maybe she only has the ability to see three vendors. And if so, that can be filtered and restricted to reflect that. And that goes for any of the fields that have a magnifying glass associated to them. At this time, we're going to go ahead and step out and start entering information onto the requisition. But my main point in regards to the layout of the form is, no matter where you work within your organization, or what your job is, you have the ability to configure the view of the requisition entry form for that person to make it very quick and easy 
for them to enter in information and restrict the information so they are less apt to cause any mistakes or any errors. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Paramount Workplace logo, and this is an area that you can have branded for your own company. So I click on that logo, it does take me back out to my main dashboard, where we're going to talk about the two different types of catalogs. Now again, if you've been given access to the catalogs, you would see them on your dashboard. The two types of catalogs that we work with are internal catalogs as well as punch-out catalogs. We're first going to talk about our internal catalogs. So what I've done is I've created an office supply catalog. I've just added an icon to represent that, I that actual catalog. And I'm going to click on this and take us into the internal catalog. Now internal catalogs are catalogs that you set up and maintain on your own. So either you've gotten a download from your vendor or you've manually gone in and set up the actual items with the pictures and the descriptions and the, the pricing. Now these items do not have to be in your inventory. They can be just a catalog set up with specific items for you and your end users. Once the items are set up, you can of course categorize them to make it very easy for you to select and go through to find the exact item that you're looking for. You also have a search bar to help you find that specific item. Today I'm going to go ahead and do our requisition as a new hire that has started at our company. So first off, I'm going to grab an expanding folder because every new hire always gets an expanding folder. I'll go ahead and add that to my cart and it does show right in my cart exactly what I have added. I need to update the quantity or remove. I can quickly do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and continue shopping because you can have more than one internal catalog. From my drop-down screen, I'm going to choose my AV catalog, where I then again can go through the different categories. Or if I see the item that I'd like to add to my requisition, which is this HDTV, I'm going to go ahead and choose to add that to cart. At this point, I can review the items in my cart, continue shopping, or go ahead and create order requisition. I'm going to go ahead and create the order requisition. When I do so, I do now see those two line items have been populated onto my requisition entry screen. The other type of catalog is our punch out catalog. Now if you've been given access to the shop button here at the header, you would have the ability to either shop the internal catalogs or our punch out catalogs. Today the punch out vendor that I'll be working with is called Office Depot. Now punch out is an open industry standard utilizing what's called CXML. What the advantage is to a punch-out vendor versus an internal catalog is that you're actually going out to the vendor site that they have set up for you. So the vendor maintains the site for you as their customer. You have all their basic search criteria that you would have normally on their site where you could go ahead and find that actual item or you could definitely just type in the item number and have that populated as well. Now, Paramount did not create Punch-Out, but we connect to vendors that offer Punch-Out. So Office Depot is a vendor that offers Punch-Out, and we have now directly connected to them. I have found my big pens that I would like to add to my actual shopping cart, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my quantity and choose to add. I want to do so, of course, I can go ahead and continue shopping or check out, and we'll go ahead and check out and have that line item now populated onto the requisition entry screen. Now keep in mind that that order is not complete yet with Office Depot and would not be complete with Office Depot until the purchase order is sent electronically to them and then at that point they would send me those ballpoint stick pens. I'm going to go through quite a few other ways that we can add items onto the requisition. The next way would be one of my favorite ways and that's a shopping list. A shopping list is a template for regularly requested items. A lot of people use this for maybe a weekly supply list or if you just have a regular template that you always use for specific things. In my scenario, every new hire, I know there's specific computer parts that we have already set up that I can choose from. So I'm going to choose my computer shopping list. When I choose my computer shopping list, it does show me all the different items that I have available in my template. All I need to do is actually choose a quantity. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one keyboard and choose to load that item onto my requisition. And when I do that, it now populates that keyboard onto my requisition. We can also import line items onto the requisition via a CSV template form that we provide for you using the import button at the header. 
I could pull a requisition from history, choose to duplicate it using my duplicate button, and maybe um, edit or change a few quantities, and then quickly submit for approval. You could also come down into the main body of the requisition, and we have a magnifying glass next to the item file. If I click on that magnifying glass, it's going to show all the items in the item master file that I have been given access to. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this HB Color Laser Jet, and all I need to do at this point is add a quantity. The next way I'm going to add something onto this requisition is just to simply type it in, and I'm going to say that I need some cleaning services for that area, and it's going to be two hours at $25. So at this time, I've got quite a few different line items added to my requisition quite a few different ways. So each line is independent of itself, meaning each line will have its very own general tab at the bottom. When I highlight line one for my expanding folder that came in from that internal catalog, the department and the location have defaulted in. Now again, these fields can default in depending upon how you have it configured. Maybe every field will automatically default in based on that user. Maybe every field will default in based on the item. Completely up to you and very configurable. So for line one, the vendor and the GL account have not populated. These are not required fields, so I do not have to fill them in at this level. They can be filled in throughout the routing process. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and grab the vendor. I'm going to click on my magnifying glass. It does bring me up to my vendor list where I choose a vendor, and I will do the same for my GL. I'm going to click on that GL account and add that as well. I'm going to go to line two. Line two doesn't have a vendor or a GL account either, and I can do the same at that point. So we'll grab a vendor and a GL account. Keep in mind, this is not required. So you're doing this um, as just for additional information. In fact, the GL account is one field that a lot of people have removed at this level. So people entering a requisition may not know that GL account, and it's a field so very easy just to hide and have it taken away so they don't even have to worry about that. When I highlight line three, I can see that the vendor of Office Depot has defaulted in, but the GL account did not. So we'll go ahead and just grab that. Line four for the keyboard, the vendor defaulted in, as well as the GL account. My main point is just to let you know that each line is completely independent of itself, and you have the ability to code it as you go or have that filled in throughout the approval process. Line five defaulted the GL, but no vendor, and I'll go ahead and grab that as well. Line six, I'm going to leave that completely blank because I have no idea who my team lead would like me to use for that cleaning service as a vendor or what GL account. But I do have in additional information in the form of an attachment. <laughs> Next to each line, I can see that there's paper clips. Now, those paper clips mean that I can have line level attachments. If I go ahead and click on that paper clip, it's going to bring me up to my attachment screen where I can go out and pull in my attachment. I can put in a description and then attach that file. I do have my inline view turned on, so I'm able to see the inline view of that attachment right away. That paperclip has also changed to the paperclip around a piece of paper. Now you can have unlimited, level, uh, unlimited attachments at the line level, or you could also come up to the upper right-hand corner and click on attachments and have an attachment to the header or the entire requisition. Now, there's one last thing that I'd like to do in regards to this requisition. As I look at each line, I see that line two is quite a large expenditure. And I want to add something in the form of a comment to um, help with that actual line. So I'm going to highlight line two, and I'm going to go to my comments field. There are two types of comments. There's the vendor comment as well as the internal comment. The vendor comment will print on the purchase order. So I'm going to need, say, need ASAP. The internal comment will stay just within workplace. It can be additional information that you want to flow through as this follows through the approval process. So I'm going to say new hire needs TV to relax. And we'll see how this um, will actually flow through with that type of comment in regards to approval or disapproval. When I started typing, automatically a sticky note did populate here in line two 
letting me know that I do have a comment associated to that line. Now you can have line level of comments or in the upper right hand corner I could click on comment and have a header comment to encompass the entire requisition. I'm going to go ahead and name our requisition and I'll say new hire for south office. So at this point, I have all the required fields filled in on this requisition, and I've actually gone a step further and added more information to help this requisition go through the approval process. We do have a few other details or functions that you can do. We have a mass line change, where if I wanted to change everything on this actual requisition to a specific GL account, department, or location, you can do that as well with our mass line change. I have the ability to also do a GL distribution. If I want to split one line into more than one GL account, I can do that as well. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and submit this for approval. And to do that, all I need to do is come up to the header and click on Submit. Now we have unlimited levels of approval and unlimited approval paths, meaning that absolutely everything on this requisition can be fully approved before the, the transaction is or purchase order is even created. So if you remember, each line was independent of itself. So that means I could have this routed for approval based on the vendor, the location, the department, the GL, the item. So for example, I could get very detailed with my approvals, meaning that I could route for approval to the department manager because of the department. Then I could route to IT because it's computer or hardware related. I could route then to finance because of the amount. And then I could route to my controller or CFO because it's over budget so I could get very detailed with the robust approvals. You also have basic position-based approvals. Now position-based approvals are based on the employee who enters the requisition, their manager approves, their regional or district manager approves, the CFO, the CEO approves, and then typically you have position-based approvals um, with a dollar amount threshold associated. So what we can also do is actually take and combine both of those approvals that I just mentioned. You can combine position-based approvals with the detailed line-based approvals and have them take place together. We can accommodate pretty much any scenario that you have as far as getting the lines approved before creating a purchase order. Before I log out as FOI, the person who has started the requisition process, I'd like to show you our Details tab. As I click on the Details tab, it does show me the status of the requisition. So I can see that the status of the requisition has been submitted. I can also see the actual approval path. So in my scenario, I can see that this is going to go to Lisa Robinson next, as she is de uh, denoted in the bold. If there were more than one approval process or approval level, you would be able to see that as it go would flow through. So you'd see everybody that it's going to go to um, within the actual details tab, which makes it very easy for you to know the status of your requisition at all times. At the bottom of the screen, there's also a audit log right here, and this is going to time, date, and stamp everything that happens to this actual transaction. At this time, I'm going to log out as the person that started the requisition. The next thing that happened is an email is sent out, and this is an example of what that email would look like. It's telling me that I have, as an approver, a requisition that's waiting for my approval. Right within the email, I could click on this hyperlink, and it would automatically take me into Workplace, where I could choose to approve or disapprove the entire requisition or the independent line items. Or I could also reply to the email, and from within the body of the email, I could come down, and at the header level, if I wanted to approve everything on the requisition, I could type a Y within the brackets and hit Send, and that would automatically update everything within Workplace. If I wanted to disapprove something, um, I'm going to disapprove at the header level, so that means I'm disapproving everything. Um, all I would need to do is type in an N and then add comments as to why it's being disapproved and hit send, and that would automatically update Workplace. I could also go into each individual line and approve or and disapprove. Maybe I'll approve line one. Line two, I will disapprove, but again, I need to add comments as to why I am disapproving, and line three, I'll approve. I simply then hit send and that would automatically update Workplace. Email approval is a very popular way to do the approvals or disapprovals. It's not the only way. The other way would be to log into the application. So now I'm going to change roles and I am, have now become Lisa. I am the approver. 
that was next in line in that um, actual details tab. So as I log in as Lisa, this is the view of the dashboard that she has. It's different than what Foy had. And one main thing that's different is she has a to-do list. So if that email didn't prompt her to let her know that she had something to approve, as soon as she logs in, she does have that detail to, um, list to take, excuse me, that to-do list to look at what she has pending. And so she has to um, approve pending requisitions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that takes us to a load screen where Lisa could get detailed as to what she wants to see, or she could go ahead and click on load. And that would bring up everything that's in her queue, whether that's one line item or an entire requisition. Because remember, we have um, unlimited levels of approval. So one line could go to one person, while three of the others go to someone else. In this scenario, the entire requisition has come to Lisa for approval. Now, as an approver, you can give the approver the ability to edit, um, add information to the actual requisition, or you can lock it down where all they have is the ability to approve or disapprove. Completely up to you in regards to your business process. If I'm an approver and all I simply do is uh, be able to approve or disapprove, I can approve everything all at once at the header level by clicking on Approve All, or I could disapprove everything by clicking on Disapprove All. And of course, if I disapprove something, I want to have a comment back to that original requester letting them know why it's disapproved. Today, though, I'm going to go through the lines and make that decision as to what I want to approve and disapprove. If I look at line one, there's my top tab expanding folders. If I go to my general tab, I can see the information there that has been coded. None of this is gray, so that means that I can change any of that information if I choose to. I can go through each line. Line two, I can see it has a comment on it because there's that sticky note. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the comments. I can see that the requisitioner says they need it right away and that the new hire needs a TV to relax. Well, I really don't know if I can justify um, that as being a, a necessity, um, so I'll make that determination after I've gone through each one of the lines. If I look at the next line, line three, again, I can verify the general tab. I can scroll through, look at the next one in line four, and then line five as well, I can see all that information is there. And the last line is line six. And as soon as I go on to line six, I can see the inline view of my actual transaction. Um, I can verify some more of the information. It's for cleaning services. Okay, so I know that for cleaning services in this little small area of that um, map, we always use a certain vendor. And I can see that FOI didn't assign that. So as the approver, I have the ability to choose that at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab that actual vendor and then assign a GL account. Again, at this level, it's not required. It would need to be filled in before the purchase order is created. But as the approver, I can add that information if I do know it. Once as the approver, you've gone through and, and uh, verified the information, you then have the ability to choose to approve or disapprove. Again, we can do it at the line level or at the header level. At the line level, um, I can approve or disapprove independent lines. So I'm going to approve line one. And line two, I just can't approve a, a new TV for a hire. So to do, disapprove something, I'm just going to click on that little red radio button but I do need to have a note back to that original requester letting them know why it's disapproved. And to do that, I click on the little person that's right next to the Approve button. This brings up my note to the requester, and I'm just going to say Find Cheaper, and then I'll save that. The rest of the lines, I'm okay, so we're going to go ahead and just choose to approve those. So at this time, I have disapproved one line, and I've approved five. The next step is just to go ahead and choose to process. And to do that, I come up to the header level and click on Process. Now, when I choose to process, again, emails are going out to the next people in line for approval. An email has also gone out to that original requester, letting them know that one line was disapproved. I can see right away that one line was disapproved and five were approved. One last thing to show you as the actual user, I'm going to come into what's called User Preferences. This is where we have the area to turn on your alternates. So maybe I'm going to be out of the office this afternoon and I need to engage my alternate to do the approvals on my behalf. If so, all I need to do is come in and turn that on. Now this is not where I set up who my alternates are, it's just where I turn them on. Your alternates would be set up by your system admin. I can also choose to schedule when I would be out, maybe I'll be on vacation and I can choose during that time frame that my alternate would approve on my behalf. 
So at this time, we're going to go ahead and log out as the approver. Now, if you remember, one line was disapproved. So I'm going to log back in as that original requester so we can see what he sees. As I log back in, right away in my dashboard, I can see new hire for the south office. I can see that outstanding transaction is showing that one was disapproved and five were approved. Right from my dashboard, if I click on that, it takes me directly into that transaction where I can go through the lines and understand which one was disapproved. If I look at the lines, I can see the green radio buttons next to each one, meaning that those were approved. The red does mean that it is disapproved. If I highlight that line and go to my Details tab, it's going to tell me why it was disapproved. And in this scenario, it does say to find cheaper. Now, that information was also part of that email that came back to this original requester, so they would have received that comment in their email as well. At this time, um, I could go ahead and find a different item. I can leave it. I can do whatever I need to because that line is not going to hold up the other lines for creating POs. So for today's scenario, we're just going to leave that. I'm not going to resubmit, and we're going to continue through our process. Now, the last person that I'm going to log into as today is by the name of Ben. Ben is my purchasing agent, my buyer, or just your final reviewer of the requisition before it becomes a purchase order. When I log in as Ben, he has a different view. He has some different modules that he has ability to access, as well as he has the shopping cart. Now, under his to-do list, he does have the pending requisitions or pending RFQ requisitions. As a requisition goes through the approval process and reaches Ben, he can choose to send it out for RFQ if he would like. If that's more information that would be, uh, if you'd like more information on the RFQ, please contact your partner and we can definitely set up a demonstration to go through that in more detail. Today we're going to go ahead and just click on Review Pending Requisitions. When I click on that, it does bring up a load screen that is a little bit larger than what we previously saw. And that's because as the buyer, the final reviewer, Ben is going to be receiving requisitions from quite a few different areas. So he could choose to pull up by a specific department, by a specific GL account, by a specific requisitioner, or he could also choose to sort the actual requisitions maybe by vendor to make sure that he can consolidate numerous requisitions onto one PO in case you are offered price breaks. Today I'm just going to go ahead and choose load and this will bring up everything that's in my queue. At this point I can expand that requisition and go through the different line items. As I look at the line items, I can verify whether or not I want a purchase order created or if I actually want to pull something from inventory. So let's go ahead and start with line one. As I look at line one, it's a top, um, excuse me, top tab, top tab, tough pocket expanding folder. I click on my general tab. Now when I open up my general tab, you can see there's quite a few more fields that are available. Now, these fields have been available the whole time, but we just happen to have them hidden from the, those other users' views. At this time, as that reviewer or buyer, I have the ability to add additional information or change anything. I can go through each line and continue to do that. If I get to line five, I can see that there's one thing that's different on this, that this is an inventory item. Now, I can verify, do I want to create a purchase order for this or this little box does release or transfer this item from inventory and a pick ticket would be created. Line six is the cleaning services and again that inline view of that attachment has followed it all the way through so everyone throughout the approval process will always have that information right there available to them at their fingertips. So at this point again as a reviewer I can choose whether or not I want the purchase order created by just approving or if I disapprove something it would go back to that original requester. For today, I'm going to go ahead and choose to order all at the top, and that does then populate all the green icons to ensure that, yes, I want those to move through the process. Once I've done that, my next step is to choose to process. And when I choose to process, the first thing that's going to happen is Workplace is going to verify that the uh, critical information is on here, such as a shipping method. If the information is not available, you would receive a warning right away to make sure that you have that on that actual line item for the purchase order to be created. So let's go ahead and go into that general tab and we'll add that shipping information. And we've got the shipping method is for FedEx. And let's go back and just verify each one. There we go. And we'll grab that shipping information. 
and at this time, I'm going to go ahead and choose to process again. After Workplace verifies that there's a GL account, that there's a vendor, that there's a shipping information, all of that is on Workplace. At that point, it then continues through the process to generate the purchase orders. Now, the purchase orders will be created and available to me right here within Workplace. As you can see, it's come back with one, two, three, four, five different purchase orders from that one requisition. Now, the purchase order number PO600067 with this green CXML, that is my punch out vendor. So now that order is complete as this PO has been sent via CXML to Office Depot and they will now ship me those that, the goods. The other vendors have not been set up as uh, email vendors, which they surely can, and those uh, purchase orders can be emailed directly to the vendor. Let's go ahead and take a look of, at an example of that purchase order. And this is an example of what that purchase order can look like. So at this time, we have completed the requisition to purchase order portion of it. And where we're going to move into next is actually our receiving and invoice matching. So my next person that actually does this, his name is Phil. And as I log in as Phil, this is the dashboard that he has. He only has the ability to do receiving and invoice matching. As I click on our receive invoice match, this of course shows me the outstanding transactions the report or reports that I've been given access to, and the transactions that I can do. First, we're going to start with our receiving wizard. Our receiving wizard is a great way for you to receive in items very quickly and easily. As I click on my receiving wizard, it pulls up a load screen where I could get detailed as to actually what I want to see. Again, if I just wanted to pull up every PO that is available, I can click on load. Now, as the person receiving something in, maybe I'm sitting at the warehouse and I'm going to go ahead and choose to receive in an item. To do that, all I need to do is click on the box next to the PO number. If I need to add any comments, I surely can. I can verify the items that we've received. The quantity received item right here, number two, has defaulted in from the item on the purchase order. That can default to zero, and you can have your actual warehouse people make sure and count that information and then populate that as they go. Attachments can also be done. If I choose an attachment, hit the header level, and that would be a um, packing slip or whatever it might be as well. At this point, uh, for this auto-receive or the wizard, I can choose to go ahead and choose to uh, process. You can wrap your approvals around the actual receiving session as well. For today's scenario, I do not have an approval process wrapped around this to show you that you are able to receive that in and have that receipt information um, coming back to you within Workplace. But of course you could route it for approval based on maybe the quantity received, uh, the vendor, uh, position-based approval, completely up to you. So at this point I can see that the session is processed and there's my receipt that has been created. Now we can take this one step further and we can go in to do a receive match invoice. Now I'm going to go into my receive match invoice. This pulls up the um, receive match invoice screen that has been configured for this user. Again, just like requisition, fields can default values in, be made to read only, have required. And once you have that information, you're then able to go ahead and pull up um, your receive invoice match. So the type that I'm going to do today, I'm not only going to receive it, but I'm going to receive it and I also have the invoice to match to it. So my type has now been changed to receipt invoice. I'm going to go ahead and choose to load the purchase, actually we'll pull a vendor first. So I'm going to pull a vendor of um, CTI computers and then I'm going to load all the purchase orders for CTI computers. When I do that, it brings up all the purchase orders and of course I would have that purchase order in front of me or that invoice number um, going back and relating to that PO. So I'm just going to select that and choose to load. It then brings all that information onto my receive invoice match screen where I can see the PO number, the item, the item description. I can see the price, the quantity invoiced, and the quantity um, received. At this time, um, again, I could go ahead and add some comments at the comment field. I could do some um, additional coding of it if I'd like to underneath my general tab. Um, I could do any types of attachments at the line level, at the header level, packing slip, invoice, that can all be attached. And once that information has been populated, again, once I choose to submit, it can be routed for approval. 
you can route it for approval based on um, unlimited values. So just like before, I could base it on approval position based. I could route it for approval based on specific items, um, based on specific vendor. Completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and just add an um, invoice number and we'll go ahead and choose to, sub to submit it. Now, once I choose to submit in my scenario, I don't have an approval process uh, wrapped around it just so we can make sure that we can get through everything today in the demo. I can see that there is now that voucher that's created. You are seeing an error here, and that's because I'm not live connected to an ERP at the back end, and so that, e that actual error is being populated. But there is a voucher number that was created in Workplace. The next thing that we can do is actually move into um, our check request. And what I'm going to do is log in as FOI. And as I log in as FOI, he has the ability to not only do requisitions, but he has the ability to do check requests. Now, in our eyes, a check request is a non-PO related invoice that has come in. And we all know those always show up at your desk. And you wonder, where did this invoice come from? So as we go into our check request entry screen, this is, again, the form that has been configured for this user by the name of FOI. So as a check request entry screen, you could go ahead and choose select invoices. When I choose select invoices, this brings up the invoices that have been put into the workplace folder that has been made available to me. So if we go ahead and just grab an invoice that has been put into that workplace folder, I now have the inline view of that invoice where I could go ahead and enter the information. So maybe this is an electric bill, and then I can choose the vendor. Again, the lookup screen is giving me access to the vendors that I have been given access to. Can enter in that invoice right off the document that's uh, next to me, and then continue to add the information. Once I have all the information populated, I can go ahead and go to my general tab, do the coding if I'd like, or again, that can be done throughout the approval process, add any comments need, that are needed, as well as any additional attachments that I may need at the line level. At this point, as soon as I hit submit, it will route for approval, and you can have it go through approval, unlimited levels of approval, and unlimited approval paths, just like your requisition. And at the final stage of this, once it's fully approved, the transaction will be created over in your ERP as an accounts payable transaction. So at this point, we've covered our requisition to purchase order, our receiving an invoice matching, as well as non-PO related invoices, and having those create the transaction in your ERP. At this point, I'll turn it back over to Susan if there are any questions. Thank you so much, Beth. That was awesome. Um, okay, so now we're at a question area. Um, Jim, if you can go ahead and unmute everybody so we can get any questions answered. You're also more than welcome to type those into the chat box if you would like. <coughs> Are there any questions? Okay, so one thing I just wanted to point out from an integration standpoint with Sage 300, um, once we've gotten through the REC to PO process, at that time if you choose, transactions can be sent over to Sage 300. If you choose to use Workplace as a full sub, sub ledger, if you will, to AP, then you can go through the receiving and invoice match as well. And then at that time, the transactions will be sent over to Sage 300 AP. And they, they come in a form of a batch, so you can still get those updated over in, in your ERP. And I'm sorry that we did not get a chance to go over expense today, but again, if you want to reach out to Jim to set up time for that, we can we can go through that a live demo with you uh, separately from this. Okay, it does not sound like there's any questions. 
Um, again, we thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. And um, just note that because we appreciate your time so much, we will be sending through your email address that you use to register for this webinar, a $10 Starbucks card, um, to again, appreciate your time. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. That was very informative. Thank you. Thank you.